In this video, I want to find the order of convergence of Newton's method, the fastest method. To do that, we're going to have to Taylor series expand like madman, but I think we can do that. So let's start with Newton's method. So we know Newton's method is uh, xn plus 1 equals xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn is an iteration method. We need to define the error is uh, epsilon n is the difference between the root of f of x, which we denote by r, and uh, the nth iteration, x sub n. Okay, so I want to write Newton's method then in terms of an iteration scheme for the error. So we can uh, uh, subtract both sides of Newton's method from r, and we can get r minus x sub n plus 1 equals r minus xn, and minus minus will give us plus f of xn over f prime of xn. And then write that in terms of the error. So this becomes epsilon n plus 1 equals epsilon n plus xn, then we can write as r minus epsilon n. So it's f of r minus epsilon n over f prime of r minus epsilon n. Okay, uh, that's the best we can do with our Taylor series. Now we have to start Taylor series everything. So the idea here then is epsilon n is small. So we're Taylor series expanding around epsilon equal to zero. So let's do that. So we have um, epsilon n plus 1 equals epsilon n. The Taylor series of the numerator here around epsilon n equals 0 is plus f of r, which is 0 because r is a root of f, minus epsilon n times f prime of r. Then the quadratic term is plus epsilon n squared over 2 times the second derivative of r, and so on. Uh, we'll only need terms up to epsilon n squared. So that's the numerator. And that's divided by the denominator, which uh, Taylor series expand of f prime is going to be f prime of r minus epsilon n times the first derivative, which is f double prime of r, the first derivative of f prime, plus um, other terms that start with epsilon n squared, and it turns out we won't actually need them, okay? So we've Taylor series expand the numerator and the denominator, then the next Taylor series expansion we need is to try and lift the denominator up to the numerator. To do that, we can um, divide the numerator and the denominator by f prime of r, f prime of r, so the denominator will become 1 minus something small. So if you have 1 over 1 minus delta, you can tail a series, expand that as 1 plus delta, okay? So we divide the top and bottom by f prime. So we have epsilon n plus 1 equals epsilon n plus, and then we divide by f prime. Uh, f of r, remember, is 0, so we should make use of that. So r is a root, so that term is 0. So we divide minus epsilon n f prime of r by f prime of r. That will become a minus epsilon n. And then we have a plus epsilon n squared over 2 f double prime of r 
over f prime of r plus other terms that depend on epsilon n cubed. And then the denominator we divide it through by f prime of r. So we have a 1 minus epsilon n f double prime of r over f prime of r plus additional terms which depend on epsilon n squared. Now we use the Taylor series expansion of, of uh, 1 over 1 minus a delta, a small number. Taylor series expands as 1 plus delta in the numerator. So we end up with epsilon n plus 1 equals epsilon n plus, and then we have minus epsilon n plus epsilon n squared over 2 f double prime of r over f prime of r plus terms of proportional to epsilon n cubed. And then we lift up the denominator, so a very useful trick. That becomes 1 plus epsilon n f double prime of r over f prime of r plus terms proportional to epsilon n squared. Okay? We don't know really beforehand what we can drop, what we can't drop, but I know that Newton's method is order epsilon n squared, so I'm trying to keep terms of order, Newton's method is order 2, so I'm trying to keep terms of epsilon n squared. Okay, so this multiplication gives us a minus epsilon n, it gives us an epsilon n squared here, and then the outer ones and the outer ones gives us an epsilon n squared. All the drop terms will give us an epsilon n cubed, okay, which is why they are dropped, because the leading order term in this first expression is epsilon n. So an epsilon n squared here would give us an epsilon n cubed. So I'm dropping it. Okay, so this becomes epsilon n plus, and then what do we have here? Minus epsilon n times 1, so minus epsilon n. We have uh, the second term in the first product times the first in the second. So we have a plus epsilon n squared over 2 times f double prime of r over f prime of r. And then we have the first term in the first product and the second term in the second will give us a minus uh, epsilon n squared times uh, f double prime of r over f prime of r. And then the remaining terms that I've dropped uh, are epsilon n cubed as a leading term, and uh, I'm justified in dropping that because I have already have uh, a non-zero order here. So epsilon n minus epsilon n cancels, and then um, epsilon n squared over 2 minus epsilon n squared gives us a minus uh, epsilon n squared over 2. Let me write the coefficient in front. So f double prime of r over f prime of r. And then uh, there's a factor of 2 here. So epsilon n squared over 2 minus epsilon n squared is minus epsilon n squared over 2. So the factor of 2 here. And then we have an epsilon n squared. Okay? So our conclusion here, let me write it in different color, is that the absolute value of epsilon n plus 1 is equal to some constant, positive constant k given by this factor here times the absolute value of epsilon n squared. So this method is order 2. Okay, we even get the coefficient, right? So if the derivative of f is 0 at the root, meaning that it's a minimum or a maximum or, or one of these uh, like x cubed functions, inflection point, then you will have problem. 
right? Newton's method will not convert very fast because the denominator becomes zero. But if the derivative is not zero at the root, we call that a simple root, then we get an order two convergence for Newton's method. And it's a very fast method, okay? Order two is considered to be very fast. Okay, let me review. We're computing the order of convergence of Newton's method. We start with Newton's method. We define the error to be the root minus the nth iteration value. That's epsilon n. We convert Newton's method's equation into an equation for the error. Then we Taylor series expand like madmen and try to get the leading order uh, term in epsilon, which turns out to be epsilon sub n squared. That's where we get order two method. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.